and one more scene if you can bear it. But this is the one with the literary reference in it, if you, if you spot it. <laughs> Although the restaurant wouldn't open until 10, the back door was already open to let out the heat and smells of the kitchen. As they drove by, the old woman was dumping some frothy liquid from a large pot onto the ground outside the door. Steam rose all around her as the hot liquid hit the cold earth. Teddy stopped the car a short distance down the alley and turned off the engine. As soon as the car was stopped, Frank started to get out. Wait a minute, Teddy said. His voice said more than his words. Something wrong? The old woman, you saw her. Sure, so what? There's two of them in the kitchen. Seeing her at the door reminded me. The man looks more like a soldier than a cook, and from what I saw, he's handy with knives. Might be trouble. We'll handle it, Frank said. He took his pistol from his jacket pocket and got out of the car. Teddy got out the other side, then reached under the seat for Bernard's gun. Together, they walked back down the alley to the restaurant. The old woman had gone back inside the kitchen, but in front of the door she had left her signature in the form of a large, dark stain from which columns of steam still rose. A brief and bitter smile flickered across Frank's face. For a second he imagined a sign above the door, Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. He stepped around the steaming muck and into the heat of the kitchen. As Teddy followed him in, he peered cautiously into the gloom. After the sunlight outside, it took a moment for his eyes to adjust to the half-light of the kitchen. The old woman was crouched near a drain on the floor using a wire brush to vigorously scrub a large iron pot, probably the same one she had just dumped outside. Across the room, the man was using a cleaver to cut up some kind of meat. He looked up, recognized Teddy, and smiled. This way, Teddy hissed. Then Locke was seated at his desk doing paperwork when they walked in. He looked up. Seeing the white man, he spoke in English. Gentlemen, how may I help you? Then Locke, Teddy said, I need to see Mr. Chow again. He is checked out of the hotel. Can you find him for me? Can you set up another meeting for me and my friend? Perhaps, then Locke looked at the two of them over. I do not know who is after you, but you do not need those guns in here. Can you get Mr. Chow, Frank snapped. It will take time. We have no time. Get him now. Then, Locke, I apologize for my friend. Please do the best you can. Frank looked out the door. The man with the cleaver had come out from behind his table and was now walking across the room toward the office door. Fuck that, Teddy. Can't you see he's setting us up just like all the others? The man with the cleaver was almost at the door now. Frank raised his pistol and fired three fast shots into the man's chest. We need to know now. Frank walked out of the office and across the kitchen to where the old woman had stopped scrubbing the pot and was watching him come. She looked straight at him without blinking. There was a quiet calm in her eyes that scared Frank. It was as though she had long ago accepted that she would die in just this way. He placed the muscle of his pistol at her temple and pulled the trigger. I'm sorry, Fenlock, Teddy said as Frank walked back to the office. I do not want to hurt you, but Frank has passed my control. Please tell us quickly what we need to know. Frank came in. The tick at the corner of his mouth was flashing across his cheek like a lightning storm, powerful and out of control. He raised his pistol and pointed it at Fenlock's chest. Now, he said, talk. Thank you.